and welcome. Um, if you're joining us for the first time, we want to welcome you. We want to extend a really warm welcome to anyone that's joining us live, anyone that's going to watch this um, later on. Um, and for those that are joining us for the second time, that's so exciting. Um, welcome back. Yeah, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining. And we're just so excited because we get to open the word with so many people. And we get to open the word with you. And I hope that this time is a, is a little snippet that you get to spend with Jesus. A time that you get to meet with him, that you get to study his word. And just get away from the distractions of the world, the things that take up our time so often. Um, we just want to extend the warmest welcome to you guys and, and welcome you into Braden's Lounge Room um, here in Finland. For those of you who don't know us, my name is Levi Johnson and I'm here with my good friend Braden Enterman. Um, and we're currently situated in Finland, so very far from away, far away from many of our listeners. Um, so we saw in the comments section a whole bunch of different places that you guys are from and we'd love for you guys to continue to interact with us and to share where you guys are listening from. Um, we can see someone from Australia. Um, hi, Nina. Um, nice to see that you're joining us live. Um, yeah, so wherever you're from, please send Tazzy. them in. Tasmania, <laughs> cool. We love Tazzy. Um, it was really exciting. My grandparents watch from New Zealand, which is about as far away as you can get from Finland. So it's nice to see that the internet is um, going across the world and we're able to share the gospel through that. It's really exciting. Um, so, ready for the storm. Our topic again for today, this is the second time we're going to touch on this topic. Do you want to give us a little recap yeah. of, of where we are? Okay, so we're going to have a prayer together and we will open the word. We'll do a recap of last week and get into it. <clears throat> Father in heaven, thank you so much for the privilege of being able to do Bible study today mm. um, with our friends most of whom we've never met, but we have a great hope in Jesus that we will be able to spend eternity getting to know one another and spending time with Christ. Father, your word is what we need. We need it more than even the very food that we eat day by day. Um, this world needs the Bible. It needs the gospel. And I pray that today we would all be enhanced, that our eyes would be um, more clearly discerning of the love of Christ and more aware of the wild times that we're living in. We pray for your Holy Spirit to guide us in this Bible study. May we have a good time in the Word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Um, <clears throat> so last week, we had um, an exciting time in the Word together, considering this idea of a coming storm. And the Bible is very, very clear that because of the sin problem in this world, um, we're in for a rocky ride in this world. And Jesus actually says that just before his return, things will get incredibly difficult on this planet because um, uh, the Bible says the love of many is going to grow cold. Mm. So Jesus described in Matthew 24 that a time would come when sin and evil would be on the rise and consequently the love, loving relationships would be on a decline and this world would become a very political, um, tense um, um, a polarized environment that'll be very, very hard to live in. Mm. And we have tasted of, and I think you've seen more and more increasingly, this polarization in our world, this tenseness and the hatred that people have for one another, and especially for those who have differing views from them. And Jesus sees the cause of this. Jesus is the king of love, and he's the one who's able to change human hearts so that they can love one another even in difficult times. And so we are wanting to continue this Bible study today. Um, and we believe it's going to be a blessing. We've, we were just saying before that we're just so incredibly <laughs> excited about um, some of the things we were looking at here. So we're yeah. going to get you to turn in your Bibles. We're going to put it on the screen today for the benefit of anyone who may not have a Bible with them. Mm -hmm. But we want to make a very clear point to begin with today. And this is a, a point I want to make to any of you who are going through your own storms right now. It may be quite daunting and disconcerting somewhat to be hearing our presentation and hearing that this world is going to get really bad and hearing that there's going to be a storm coming and you're like, whoa, 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 I've got enough storms that I'm trying to deal with in my own life. <laughs> I've got challenges with my children. I've got challenges in my workplace. I've got challenges in my relationships. I'm feeling abandoned. I'm on my own. I'm struggling. I'm struggling. I'm struggling. And to hear that even more difficulty is coming may not be particularly exciting for you to hear. 
We want to make a point today that we want to be the flavor and the theme of our Bible study time together. I want to take you in your mind's eye to a moment when Jesus was riding into Jerusalem. This was on the Sunday before he was crucified. Thousands of people are thronging around him and they're crying, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They think that he's going to be crowned king right then and there. Jesus rides to the crest of the Mount of Olives and he looks down over the city. And then a strange thing takes place. Jesus, the King of Kings, and Lord of Lords, the one who spoke and created the universe by his power, God in the flesh, stops on the donkey that he was riding, overcome with a supernatural emotion, he starts to weep and sob and to rock back and forward on the, on the donkey that he's sitting on and groan out tears and people went silent. And they looked at him and wondering, why are you crying? This is the best day. Why are you crying? And this is what Jesus said. I'm going to get Levi to throw it up here on the screen for us. He says, uh, he said to the people and to Jerusalem, he says, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you were not willing. Mm. Yeah, this is this is incredibly powerful. Did you want to make a comment here? Yeah, I just think the imagery of what's happening here is is something to be um, amazed by, and it's so easy to forget because Jesus came as a human. It's easy to forget that he he is also the God of the universe, and in this situation, in this verse, we see him pleading for humanity, like the the God that sits on the throne, the the God that holds this whole universe in place is here and he's just saying how I wish that I could just put you under my wing and protect you but you are not willing like that imagery is so amazing to me to think of a God that is just reaching out to us and and it's really amazing because when we're struggling and and sometimes like you were saying before it feels like we're already drowning without this storm that's coming like we don't need a storm to feel like we're drowning and yet the storm's coming anyway and it's just so overwhelming that there's another storm coming and it's bigger and it's greater than anything that's ever happened before. Um, and Jesus is just just seen pleading for us. And so when, when we're just lost and, and we're just hopeless, like we just can't keep our head above water, we can know that we don't need to plead for God to protect us because he is the one pleading for us. Yeah. And I just think that's so wonderful that you do not have to convince God to look after you. You do not have to plead and please God so that he persuade will or persuade convince. nothing. God is pleasing, uh, pleading and, and persuading us to, come under, to come under his wings. He's the one doing the reaching out for us. And, and so much hope is filled in that one verse. It's incredible. Don't mm -hmm. you just love this imagery of a, a mother hen? He says, I'm like a, a mother hen who's wanting to gather the chicks under the wings and mm -hmm. shield and protect you. And why was Jesus crying? This is a, a this is an interesting point here. Why is he crying? In spite of all of his efforts to bring people and to invite them under his wings of protection, he says, you were not willing. Yeah. You were not willing. I want to encourage you, the storms that you're individually facing, and as we look to the greater conflicts and struggles that this world will face, come to Jesus and come under his wings. That is your hope and your security. Mm -hmm. And I heard a story once about a, um, a farmer who had a bushfire go through his house and uh, those down in Tasmania and other parts, you get, we get a lot, of, um, uh, a lot of bushfires in Australia. And he saw this dead, dead hen, obviously burnt, burnt to death, and um, he, he kicked it. And underneath it was um, some some chicks that were protected under her during that the, the, the fire. And I just find it such a powerful imagery. A mother hen will be willing to brave whatever storm, whatever fire, whatever um, calamity that might mm. come and to shield and to protect and to give its life to save. Jesus is calling Levi, Brayden, Brayden, your name. How often I've been wanting to gather you under the shelter mm. of my wings. I've been wanting to do this for so long and yet you've been unwilling. Friends, this is not a time to be ha having a half-hearted commitment with Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's not a time to be getting engrossed in every other thing in the world. There's only one person who can save. Mm 
There's only one person who can truly provide you with what you need in this very complicated and very yet increasingly so dangerous world that we're living in. Jesus says, come, come under my wings. Mm -hmm. And today we want to look at the question, how? (laughs) How? (laughs) Like Jesus obviously doesn't have literal wings. He's obviously employing a metaphor here. He's saying, I'm like a mother hen. Do you want to come under the refuge of his wings? Do you want to come into a close relationship with Jesus? I, I believe you do, and yeah, I believe that I we do too. Do. Yeah, and and Jesus, it's very fascinating when we were studying this throughout, throughout the week, and and like you said, we got so excited about this message. We're actually going to explore another metaphor that Jesus is, Jesus uses um, in the in the chapter of Matthew chapter seven. So if you do have your Bibles with you, uh, we will have it on on the screen, Matthew chapter seven, and right at the end of this incredible sermon that Jesus gives, one of the greatest, if not the greatest sermon ever given, that just flipped everything on its head. Everything just changed because of this sermon. Um, <clears throat> yes, hey, hey, that's my mum, Darnell. <laughs> hey, mum. Nice to see that you're joining us live. Um, whoops. Let's get this uh, slide up and let's look at this verse. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 24 and 25. And listen to what Jesus has to say here. He says, after his grand sermon, he goes, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house. A storm came and it did not fall. For it was founded on the rock. Next verse. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it fell and great was its fall. Now this here is the end of his sermon, isn't it? This is his very end. The the final illustration in the Sermon on the Mount. And um, as Levi was sharing, Jesus is um, em- embracing and utilizing an imagery here. Yeah. And for any tradesmen, any carpenters who are who are tuning in, you'll, you'll very much relate to this. Um, Jesus is saying, um, he's, he's comparing two builders and the way that they build. And more specifically, what they build upon. Yeah. And notice that Jesus talks about a storm that comes. And both of these buildings stand just fine and they look quite stable and quite sturdy. When the weather is fine. Yeah. Oh, isn't that a point yeah. for, for, for us in our lives that we, we all seem to do quite well when everything's going well. <laughs> no one's life seems to fall apart when everything is going well. But when things start, circumstances start to change, when winds of strife and conflict begin to blow and circumstances change, when the floods come, it seems to be a revealer of what is beneath your feet. Mm-hmm. It seems to reveal what's, the, the, the nature of the foundation upon which you've built. And you've seen it in your own life. We've seen it in our own lives at times where circumstances revealed things about ourselves. We went, I didn't know I had that in me. And sometimes it's quite scary. It's very, very scary. Very scary. In, in good times, the walls look strong. The roof is screwed on tight. But the foundation, no matter how strong you make the walls, if the foundation is, is not strong and ready to hold, it doesn't matter how, how, how strong these these walls are. The house is going to fall. It's going to Or come. how beautiful it is. Or oh, how expensive yeah. the materials are. Totally. The foundation is the key. And I want to just ask you a question today. Um, and you already know the answer to this. But is Jesus here giving advice to carpenters about how to build? <laughs> Not really. What he's doing is he's using it as an analogy to teach about character growth and how we build our lives. Because we... we We've, I've got a little son, he's just over a year a year of age, and it surprises me how much he doesn't know. <laughs> he probably doesn't even know my name yet. He's got a lot to learn. Um, all he knows is that I'm Papa. That's what he knows <laughs> at the moment. But we're like, a little child is like a building. It's growing, it's developing, it's becoming stronger and stronger and stronger until it is a fully developed human being. And uh, it's a far more complicated building. A human being is a far more complicated building than any building that you've ever walked into. Mm-hmm. And Jesus says, the way you built and what you build upon means everything. Mm-hmm. Everything is at stake in terms of what you build upon. Um, and 
what does it mean to build your life upon a rock? Because that sounds great. Yeah. I want to build my life on a rock, and I, I know that you want to build your life on a rock. And, and Jesus gives us the answer of what that rock is. And at the very start of that verse, it says, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, hmm. I will liken. So what is the rock that we can build our lives upon? A more important structure than any house we could build for ourselves is our lives. What are we building our lives upon? Because we've been talking about this storm that's coming upon us, a storm that's coming upon the world, and, and many of us feel like we're already sinking without the storm. How can we build our life upon the rock, upon the sayings of Jesus? And it's very interesting here. This, these sayings of Jesus, they have a specific reference to the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount is one of the most vital messages for us going through this storm. It is the message that we need to understand and internalize in our lives. God's Word is beautiful because not only can you understand it, but you can practice it. Yeah. And I think that's where the true power comes from. When we start taking God's Word and we say to Him, God, you have promised and we give it to him, and he delivers on his promises every time. Because um, isn't it interesting? It says, "He who hears these sayings of mine yeah. and does them." The Sermon on the Mount is like the—it's the constitution of the kingdom of heaven. Basically, if you want to know what it's like to live in heaven and what kind of person um, is a heavenly person and who would live in heaven, mm. you read through the Sermon on the Mount, and it describes what type. It's like the most glorious ideal of what it means to be human and to deal with the challenges of life. And Jesus says. For those who hear, number one, you've got to hear it at yeah, some point. You've yeah. got to hear the message of God, but not just hearing, but being willing to have that message impact every part of your life. See, he who hears these sayings of mine and, and does them. And does them. Yeah. So receiving the counsels, the message of the Bible, internalizing it and putting it into practice by his grace mm. is the preparation for any storm you will ever face. Yeah. And we want to illustrate why we're not going to. We don't have time to go through the whole sermon on the mount. Of course, um, it's uh, incredibly deep and a, a little bit long for the time that we have. But we want to just take you through just some of the key insights from the sermon on the mount. As to um, one of them is particularly relevant as this world is becoming increasingly hostile and loving relationships are going down. We have a tendency to love those who love us mm. and to kind of hate those. Who hate us? We we are we are kind to those who show kindness to us. We are standoffish with people who are standoffish to us. That is human nature. Mm. And if we content ourselves to function like that, we will not help the problem. We will actually make it worse. We get caught up in the storm, don't we? We get caught up in it, and we mm. actually become participants in this storm of human strife and emotion. Jesus says this in verse forty-three of chapter five. You have heard that it was said. You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. That you may be sons of your father in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even tax collectors do so? Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Notice that Jesus is calling and inviting us as human beings to a much higher plane. Mm. We don't have to have toxic relationships all the time. In fact, we do not have to content ourselves with this, this mess, this soup of toxicity that we think is normal. Jesus says, no, no, I'm calling you to a much higher plane. I want you to relate to one another with the same love mm. that I have toward you. Yeah. This is just one of the things in the Sermon on the Mount mm. that is so relevant for our time. And I want to encourage you, if you've never read it or you read it a long time ago, please read the Sermon on the Mount. Yeah. Yeah. And and read it with the lens of this storm that's coming upon the world. And, and for us, the reason why we've been so excited about this week is reading through the Sermon on the Mount and seeing how relevant this message is. This was something spoken of so many thousands of years ago, and yet it's so relevant for us today. Jesus saw down through history. He saw you and I. 
He knew your name then, and he said these words to help us, to instruct us, and to bring us under his wing, to take care of us when this storm comes upon this world. Another, another really fascinating point that Jesus makes in his sermon is in chapter 7, verse 13. He says, um, enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. Sadly, this world is going in a way that is in opposition to God's word, in opposition to the way of life that God has planned for us. And there are so many people going in the same direction. But God has called us to be different. God has called us to be peculiar and to be um, going in a different direction by entering through the narrow gate. This narrow gate is Jesus and Jesus' way of living. This life that he demonstrated, the, the, the greatest thing that you could ever do is live a life of selflessness. And he's challenged us to go through that narrow gate. That narrow gate of self-sacrifice and of suffering. And, <clears throat> and, and Jesus wants us to not follow in the world where we seek our own pleasure, where we look after ourselves and, and put ourselves above everyone else. He has a different way of living and it's more beautiful and more abundant than, than anyone could ever imagine. And he's telling us, hey, the way is through the narrow gate. The narrow way. And, and I see that... we'll. Because it's through the narrow gate and not the broad and wide open way, there's going to be opposition that's going to be faced because so many people are going the other way. Hmm. There's another uh, point here in verse 21 of chapter 7. Uh, again, how do we know that the Sermon on the Mount has relevance for these last days? Hmm. Jesus says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Notice this. He says, Many will say to me in that day, He's pointing to a future day, the day when he comes and returns. He says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name? Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Mm. We see here the relevance of the Sermon on the Mount to, the, to these days that we're living in here. Jesus says many people are going to come to him saying, hey, Lord, hey, <laughs> I'm your servant. You're my Lord. Um, and it says here that they, 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 they're basically saying to him, we've done all these wonderful things in, in your name. And he says, I don't know you. Mm -hmm. We don't have a relationship. You've been running around in my name, claiming to represent me. But in the way that you've been dealing with one another, it says, you've been breaking my law. Mm -hmm. You've been practicing lawlessness. God's law is the law of love which never violates another person or tramples upon another person. It is always thinking of others first. Here's a description of the Christian world that we see right now, and it's a mess, the religious world that we see. People doing a lot of things in the name of God, but not actually necessarily knowing Christ mm. as a personal savior mm. and friend. Because if they did, they would be in harmony with the law of God's love. Yes. Yeah. And so that brings us back to our initial point. Um, Jesus said, I want you to be close to me. I want you to come under my wings. I want to know you. I want an intimate relationship mm. with you. Mm. That is where refuge comes from. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we've got another five or so minutes, and we want to um, touch on a few, a few points. Um, I'm just going to just give a few more points here from the Sermon on the Mount uh, before, we, before we continue on with those other verses. Um, in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 21, Jesus, Jesus teaches us some points. I'm just going to hit these points. Jesus says that it's not just murder that's bad. Mm -hmm. It's hatred. He says in verse 27 that it's not just committing adultery that's bad. It's lusting. He then talks about um, how beautiful and sacred marriage is. <clears throat> he then talks about being truly honest. When you say yes, mean it. When you say no, mean it. He then says, when you are facing, um, when people are trampling upon your rights and treating you bad, he says, don't be trying to fight back. Mm. Don't be trying to inflame things. Be in a, in a position of a servant and be willing to love and respect those people, even when they're doing those things to you. Um, 
he then in chapter six talks about when you're doing religious things, praying, fasting, um, giving offerings or being generous. He says, don't do that to be seen by people. Don't be putting on a show. Be genuine and authentic with God. Um, <clears throat> on the next page here in chapter six, verse 19, Jesus says, in terms of your treasures and your money, don't be just living for this world and laying up treasures here. He says, moth and rust get those things eventually, mm -hmm. or thieves break in and steal. Invest in the kingdom of God, and that means invest in the benefit of other people and the glory of God. Mm -hmm. He talks about not serving um, two masters, being authentic with God, and then probably one of the most important. I love this bit. Verse 25 mm -hmm. and onward, it says, he addresses anxiety. He says, don't be anxious like a hamster on a running wheel, your whole life being anxious about what am I going to eat? what I'm going to drink, what I'm going to wear, where am I going to live? He says, your Father in heaven knows that you need these things. Trust in him. Be like the little bird outside and the flower in the field. They don't stress. They're not worried. The Father in heaven looks after them. Yeah. And then it, then it talks about in chapter 7, don't be running around judging people and condemning them and having an eye looking for the faults in other people. Jesus says, that's, that's not the way to live. If, and then it says, um, um, if you have needs, come to the throne of God and ask for them. That's in chapter uh, in verse 7. Um, he says that if you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give to you when you ask? Then it talks about, as Levi said, the, the narrow way of selflessness and the broad way of selfishness. And then talks about false prophets. Mm -hmm. Matthew 24, end times, totally. it talks about false prophets. And then finally it talks about many people coming and saying, Lord, Lord but not actually knowing Jesus mm. or doing what he says. Then finally, the man who built his house on the rock. If you haven't studied there, please go yeah, and look at that. Yeah, but totally. this here is the preparation for any storm that you'll ever face. If you are willing for Jesus to write these principles on your heart so that you relate to one another with that kind of quality, that kind of ideal, there's no storm that you will face in this life that will be too great for you. No, totally. Take us, take us home. Yeah, and I just, I just love the thought that God is wanting us to not get caught up in this storm. Mm -hmm. We're going to go through it and we're going to endure it, but he has a way so we don't get caught up in it. So that we don't so that our love does not grow cold. He has a way through that. And I just think it's so wonderful that that in in a, in a couple pages he gives us instruction on how to endure this storm. We're going to continue in, uh continue looking at this storm and what it means for us and, and how we can hold on to Jesus and keep our eyes on Jesus in future lessons. We're so thankful that you can join us today um, and have been able to open the word with us and to explore a little bit of the Sermon on the Mount. But, mm -hmm. but boy, it's rich. Boy, there's so much in there. And we'd love for you to have a look in your own personal time. Open the word of God. There's no greater treasure than this very book opened and people studying it. Amen. God looks upon people with absolute favor when they open his word. He's ready to bless. He's ready to pour out all of heaven upon us. He's ready to prepare us, to guard us against this storm. He's just waiting for you to open his word. Um, do we, we have a final yeah. verse or shall we? Um, let's let's maybe pray. pray. Let's pray. Yeah. Sure, sure. Would you like to pray, Greg? Yeah, I'd love to. Father in heaven, you're good. Mm. And you do good. You care about us more than we could possibly know. And you love us. I pray for every person who's listening here today that you bless them. Guide us in the scriptures. May we be anchored upon the rock and be ready for whatever storms life may bring us. And may we show the love of Christ through it all. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you all. Thank we'll you. see you next time.